It says ready to go live. Oh, I think we are live. We are live. Hello. Hello. So I've been a little remiss because yesterday, our imaginating family, if they've been following our diversity, inclusion, and equity, our community learning showcase was yesterday. And so in getting ready for that, and we had So You Think You Want to Be That earlier in the month, we have our Water Day celebration coming up on Tuesday. I was really trying to make sure that people knew the importance of this conversation. So I was trying to post it a whole bunch because I'm just super excited to talk to you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I have to say, Tiff, you have been like the biggest champion of Donovan. Of like of all my characters, we gonna you get to and it. Donovan go way back. <laughs> And we're going to talk about why Donovan and I go way back. Like okay. Donovan is like my BFF. Yeah, I understand that because he wants to let me know that if there's a problem, he's going to he's going to miss Tiff. For real, like, <laughs> you come over here, baby. Come on, let's play. He is awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Meet the author. Imagery's meet the author with the phenomenal Sandra Elaine Scott. I'm just, I'm so, 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 so excited. So I try to do everybody like this. And when I hear the answer, I'm like, what? 10 years ago. Do you remember the, like how long ago we met? I'm not sure. Well, Donovan or the magical day. And for those who don't know, the magical day right. is Look, the story. We're talking and about Donovan something. is the main character in the magical day. Right. That came out in 2016, March 3rd of 2016. I okay. cannot believe it. It's crazy. So we met probably right after it came out okay. because I had done a lot of promotion. I didn't know what I was doing and just decided, okay, putting out a children's book. And you contacted me early on and you're like, oh my gosh, this book is awesome. And you just, we just talked and you called, we ended up in a conversation that just went left, right, center, and it was amazing. And we've been friends ever since. <laughs> it's true, ladies and gentlemen, that really is how it went. Um, I want to say I may have been writing for Mosaic back then. And I was doing a physical call for children's literature to feature. Uh, it's water time, believe it or not. It's water time. My, uh, my first children's book has been out for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, yeah, it may have been somewhere up in there, but th it's true that immediately when I got the book, I fell in love with it. And we, I want to talk about why I fell in love with it, but not before I talk about all of your work, because there is a golden thread that connects it all. And it's also the reason why we immediately connected. And I like to believe that's because we both feel some kind of way about the power of instilling and encouraging imagination. So, um, yeah. Like, I, okay, let me go ahead and tell the story. So <laughs> when I first started, um, I love the book so much that um, I started teaching Imagine Reading Today, which was the first phase of this whole beta experience with our children, right? Teaching them how to read. And I use Donovan because I love that he was from, uh, I loved his culture. I loved his heritage. I loved his family, right? And I love what he ended up being tasked with because it portrays this very dynamic illustration of community, right? Mm -hmm. Courage, um, having to navigate life and what we believe, you know, what we think versus what we believe, what we do. And so... I said, you know what? I've got to incorporate this into the curriculum. And I did. And the kids loved it. And so because when we teach, and this is this is something that will also come up in Imagine Reading Adventures, our latest excursion, um, that's going to be virtual and metaversal, if you will. You'll, you'll see this even again. It's really connecting the students to uh, connections that they can make in the text but seeing themselves, right? So representation mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. 
but giving them more of the background of the story, the nuances of the story, helping them to feel Donovan through, you know, every single excursion, understanding what he was up against, you know, how he dealt with it. I mean, just, it's, it's so rich. So I had the kids do a map and it's an infinity map. Yes, it's an infinity map because, of course, there's a there's a saying you gotta get the book. I'm telling you, I don't just <laughs> love this book because, like, it's awesome. You gotta get it. And there's this infinity map, and what the kids were the assignment was after this was right after discussion. We would move into you know a, like a community a service community project where it's like okay, so out of those places that you chose on the map, you know, you could either do eight people you'd like to meet. Mm -hmm. or uh, eight places that you'd like to go. Ooh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and they had to articulate that. They had to tell, you know, why and so forth. And a lot of them, you know, they picked some of the same places Donovan did. But hey, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's mirroring, it's representation. Well, fast forward, and when we think about this broader conversation in uh, school-aged children, it really is, especially right now with 21st century learning, it's more of a hands-on. Okay, so tell me seriously where you see this in your community. You know, do you see this in your community? And so making it very personal. And that was the exit activity, you know, and it was such a perfect book to do that with. Like, I didn't have to do much, you know? Wow. I didn't. Wow. Oh, I didn't have you. to do much. I loved it. So um, talk to us about Donovan, because Don was so, was the Magical I'll, Day the first book. That, Magical Day was my first children's book, and I love to share the story uh, about how it came to be, okay. because I had no intention of writing a children's book. It wasn't where I was thinking I was going. I had just written Manana Starts Today, which was a book of affirmations for adults, and you know, my very first book was an homage to my mom called In Memory of a Saint. And that, I think that was just to purge feelings and get stuff out there. But yeah. I hadn't really thought about writing a children's book. And it, you know, it was, I had a dream. And, you know, and when I tell people the power of a dream and that, you know, listen to your dreams, people think I'm a nuts, but of it's course. the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and I of am kind of crazy, but it's okay. And yeah, I love your I, crazy. Thank you. So it it was it was like it was in the middle of the night, it was early morning, and I heard a voice as clear as day, you know, say the first of all, the the entire book was downloaded. So this was a book that was given to me by God, spirit, universe, however you choose to mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. It was downloaded to me from God. So I was going, okay. And I was then I heard get up and write it down. And of course, my answer, no, I yeah. don't want to. Yeah. It was get up and write it down. And I'm like, no. And I was like, get up. And I'm going, I'm tired. Yeah. And of course, my, the other book's called Manana Starts Today. What did I say? I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, you know, and I'm having this argument in my sleep. And finally, like her, get up. Yeah. I'm like, it's four o'clock in the morning. And I heard, get up now, write it down. And when I got scared was when I opened my eyes and I looked at the clock and it was exactly 4 a.m. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I wrote it down really quickly and then went off to sleep. Yeah. And that was the same year that um, our young black boys and, and black men were just getting murdered and shot down like crazy like it yeah. was just something like and nothing. It, was, it was horrible and it was also a summer that you know deer was visiting my yard and i would see the deer out in the very back you know in the woods and it and it dawned on me that that deer had a better chance of survival than black men and black boys mm -hmm. and when the book what when the book was downloaded it could have either been a boy or a girl i wasn't sure you know, it was the story was given, but it could have been either. And that really started to resonate with me that we needed some joy 
for black with featuring a black boy yeah. and the hurt that I was feeling and didn't know how to express. I wanted to express that joy. Meanwhile, there were two young kids and, um, that were living um, in my apartment complex and they you could tell they were lonely and they were um, let, young Latinx kids and didn't have any friends. And they kept coming around and they hungered for a place to be. Mm -hmm. And they would start every day. I'm, now I'm trying to write this story. Yeah. And, you know, I'm procrastinating because I'm trying to write. Right. And they're knocking on my door, Miss Sandra, Miss Sandra. And I'd go, Miss Sandra's not home. Yeah. And it was like, Miss Sandra, Miss Sandra. I'm like, Miss Sandra's not home. Yeah. And I was trying to write. And then it dawned on me, chill out. The story will get written. It's about the kids right now. And totally. yeah, this is your first children's book. Yeah. So with all of that, that's how Donovan came out of out of nowhere or out of being to be the magical day of instilling magical moments within kids and that they can find their own magical journey. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at, I changed the, the, the background finally, cause I'm okay. listening to you and you'd already actually told me bits of the story. I didn't mm -hmm. know about the babies that, you know, were coming to the house, but you would have to, the audience would have to read, you know, the magical day and really like own it to understand the cultural influence and how you interwove, you know, that story so gracefully, like Donovan's going to see, to visit Tia, Tia is extreme. And I mean, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, there's so many different there's, twists. It's, you know, and so for, for the audience, so those who don't know, I'm going to see if I can hold it up. So that's there the magical is. day. Look at him. And there's Donovan on the cover, right? And so Donovan is a little black boy from Jamaica and he's coming to the States to visit his, his cousin, um, Maria Luisa and his aunt Tia Vivia. Mm -hmm. And Tia is Spanish for aunt. And they're supposed to go on this magical journey so that he can get to meet the people in the neighborhood. And his, they set up a little adventure. So he meets a firefighter and he learns about being brave. Mm -hmm. He meets an elderly gardener and he learns about finding joy. Mm -hmm. He meets a soldier and he learns about being proud. He meets the graffiti artist yeah. and he learns about being creative. Enrique. You know, he meets the, he meets the nun. And he learns about having faith. faith. Mm -hmm. He meets the athlete and he learns about to never quit. And he meets a librarian and learns about that he is actually smart. Yeah. And at the end of it, he gains so much self-confidence of going around. It's like, indeed, it is a magical day. And yeah. that line, by the way, indeed, it was a magical day, was, was the actual line that was given to me to end the book. So I knew exactly, even when I wasn't sure how everything was going to go, I well, it was like, nope, that was the end. And I know when it was getting edited and things, and people were like, maybe you should change something. I'm like, that line can't change. That line has to stay. You, you know, they say um, in a, uh, on, on a previous edition of Meet the Author, we had the honor of sitting down with Archie Kraft, who wrote... Um, Kirby's, uh, what is it? The golf book. Oh my God. Please don't kill me, Archie. Um, Kirby's new shot. Kirby's, oh my God. It's a golf book and it's right in my head. So <laughs> Archie teaches golf and we've worked in programming together um, in Houston. And he and I talked about this. We talked about the game of golf and so forth. And what he said was, you know, uh, a testament of intellect is those who are able to begin with the end in mind. And we mm. were like, yeah, I've always seen it that way. And that is, you know, again, going back to that power of imagination, you see it. Okay. I see how the end should be, but I'm going to walk all the way back to the beginning. Um, a very, a, a literal skill for sure. This is why these conversations have to happen. It's, it's, I love children's books. I do. I, I cannot lie. I will not lie. <laughs> you know, children's um, book, it, it, it's so interesting to me because getting into the world of children's books, you know, people ask me what's harder to write, 
writing for an adult or writing for kids. And I'm like, kids for sure. Yeah, because for you real. have to say, there's you have, there's a lot you want to say and you've got to compact it a lot, you, and, you know, to make it like really You got to make it kitty. <laughs> kitty, but not, not, you want to make it fun and enjoyable. So you don't want to talk down. You just want to be. I mean, but but this is I, in my in my in my humble opinion, <laughs> those of us who are who have managed to wield, you know, and navigate the adulting enough to recognize that we are all children, <laughs> no matter what. Like, you, absolutely, you, you they're my never favorite books. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I love them. Um, just you know, I remember when I first got married and, and I brought my book collection out of storage and, you know, my husband was like, <laughs> you can't possibly, I'm like, and this is just a half. Cause I had lost more than half, you know, moving mm -hmm. from place to place, which was devastating for me, you know, stuff that normal people may not, I shouldn't say normal, but you know, it's like, <laughs> they're just books. No, they're not. They're, they're people and connections and things and they're opportunities to teach. And so, mm -hmm. Donovan, in all his glory, was one of the first lessons that I made major impact with. And there's a there's a we have to do benchmarking, if you will. So we have to talk about like one student that overcame or persevered that, you know, the reading skills were strengthened. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that for several kids with, you know, the sessions with the sessions that I executed where the magical day was involved. So I just absolutely love it. Fast forward. Thank you to that. And just a point to that was really interesting. I did. And that's one of the interesting that I, things that I learned from teachers um, and educators are amazing because that feedback was especially helpful with the magical day. Totally. Was that that book was really good for reluctant readers, yeah. which I didn't know at the time. I was just writing, you know, yeah. and they said, that's why, was, yeah. that's why spirit was like, get up, <laughs> help these babies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, we're so grateful. So fast forward, mm -hmm. the um, incredible Jasmine Mills that I'm following now, we're following now on Instagram. Oh my gosh. She is like an artist, artist, so inspiring because uh, I've talked, maybe I've said this via imagery, but I just reached an album as, you know, not Mrs. Tiffany, but yes. another persona, right? And uh, I'm following Jasmine and she is just giving me all kind of life. She's an incredible artist. She went back and did the coloring book, which is what she I have with coloring me. Book. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then when did Manana Starts Today come out? Manana Starts Today came out in 2014, 15, somewhere in there. I'm getting, okay. yeah, 2014, 2013, okay. 2014. Okay. And Manana <laughs> Starts Today is... Yes. What, what is that? I mean, sum it up for me. It's a book of affirmations mm -hmm. and it's an affirmation, for, you know, for adults or teens, adults to jumpstart your heart, mind, and soul. So mañana, mañana is Spanish for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it's mañana starts today. So tomorrow starts today. And so whatever you're waiting on, like so often we are waiting on to, we're waiting till we get more money before we do something. We're waiting till we have more time till we do something. We're waiting, if we have children, we're waiting till they're grown. You know, if we need to be edu we need more education. We need so many things or think we need that we don't actually, don't actually take action steps. And so I, when I was writing this book, it was at a time where I had had a lot of things going on in my life and people were like, why are you so cheerful? Like, why are you, you're, you're always so positive. And I said, that's just the way I am. And I use affirmations in my daily life. And people are like, oh, come on. And one friend teased me. She said, you sound like a used car salesman. And I just laughed. And, you know, that came out of that. And I said, you know what, I'm going to just start every time I would hear something, I would hear someone say something. I was talking to a friend and she said, today I'm free. And I'm like, oh, that's an awesome affirmation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I wrote, today I'm free. And I would just put newsprint all around, and which is like big easel paper and markers. And because I'm very visual and I would put it up and I would just put today I'm free. And I'd put that. And until I had what I collected enough affirmations. So I had today, my dreams are greater than my fears. 
today I fly on the wings of God. Today I am grateful. Yeah. Today I, you know, those, yeah. Today I dare to be the, the one right up there. I dare to be the person I want to be, which mm -hmm. is like huge for me. I mean, this conversation could go on and on and on. <laughs> we, 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 uh, this was a couple of weeks ago, you posted, you know, after doing this incredible, pulling this incredible event off, right? Cause you, we had tagged, you had tagged me on reading bingo. First of all, I love to call myself a reader, an avid, <laughs> voracious reader, but I cannot hold, I can't hold nothing to this woman right here. Uh -huh. oh. It's amazing. I mean, in the book recommendations, the amount that she reads, she again just abba abba abba, but she she hosted this event as the president, right? Of the president Friends of, the, of the Friends of the Millis Library, yes. And after the event, she posted like, "Oh, I feel like I just am not getting enough done." And I'm thinking, "What in the world are you talking about?" <laughs> it's a human. You know what? I, it was really interesting to me because so many people reached out to me from that. And I was truly grateful and really humbled by it. Yeah. And it really touched my heart because I think that happens to so many of us. It does. That we do and we do and we do and we don't still think it's enough. And with all that I was doing, I had had this feeling that I wasn't producing enough. I hadn't done enough. I started thinking, would my parents be proud of me? I mean, all the, the noise and the back chatter that was going on in my head. And that little, it was a glass full of chocolate, you know, with dove. And it's funny because yeah. it had dove affirmations. Um, yeah, dove inside the candy. Inside it. And she was just like, thank you. I, I can't tell you how how um how much I needed that or I didn't know I needed it and then when I put it out there and others talked about how they too have felt like that and also affirmed me that yes you are enough and like just chill out and be who you are so and, and it really again it ties back into manana starts today when we're having this conversation about the things that we put off or we want to do we understand it. I mean, and we affirm these things because there's a balance there. And like you said, it's human. It's, yeah. it's, it's human stuff. You can yeah. do it, yeah. you know, and, and it'll get done. The, the overthinking it and the analysis paralysis and the beating of the self up, it's all human stuff. But this is what I believe. And maybe, you know, I could be biased just because, you know, I love Donovan. But these are the things... <laughs> that we really want to exhibit and portray for our children. Yes. It's you are a little human. Yes, I may be a big human, but we're forever learning how to do this. And the the goal is to really be our best selves, yeah. you know, to improve yeah. every day. So I love Manana Stars today. I absolutely, when you sent me, sent it to me, I was just like, it's right. I'm telling you, I could see it on my, on my, on my desk. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see it. And I would just reach up, read one and take a deep breath. All right, let's knock this out because you know, <laughs> you know, and those of those who have been on the show, you know, I've been at this for over 10 years and it's not always been easy. It's not always been, you know, where I'm like, yay. It's not always been the hobby that I started off with. Like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to read books and we're just going to talk about them and la la la. It's been, you know, digging down, getting into, you know, the data, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I see why people like uh is is digging into the data and creating these opportunities for children because they are reluctant and struggling and there's so yeah. much happening right now in education. But it would I would just take it down and read one. Okay, I'm back. Then we will have conversations, you know, yeah. and you would remind me, you know, you you were influential in me dropping my album, you know. We had a we had a conversation and you, you know, you kind of very lovingly That's said, well, what do you want to do? You know, what do you want to do? <laughs> and that was that. Manana starts today. So now let's talk about, you know, because I'm trying to go in order. The Black Unicorn. Now, this story. Is like. It's just everything. It's just everything because of this whole unicorn and I noticed it, but I don't think I just really paid attention to it because it was like, what? All of a sudden, 
I mean, we've been watching My Little Pony for years. My son and I, we watched My uh-huh. Little Pony. It's good stuff. Um, <laughs> but then it, you know, it dawned on me like, oh, there is this whole unicorn thing now. Like, <laughs> unicorns are, you know, are hot. You, it's really interesting. Uh, again, um, the way that came to be was I had did I did an event and um, mother came up to me that she was looking for a, a book for her daughter and her daughter was really dark skin. And she looked at, because actually Home Casa comes before Black Unicorn. But it does. You know what? Yeah. It, we need to talk about that. Yeah. But Home Casa, and she saw that it had a little dark skin girl on the cover. And she said, my daughter um, is being teased. She, her daughter was biracial. She was Amerasian or um, African-American and Asian. And, but she was being teased for the color of her skin. And I had mentioned to her, you know, there's another book. There was another author there who had a book I thought would be more appropriate for her daughter um, at the event we were. And, but, and I, and I said, you know, you could get this one. It's great, but I don't think so. But after she left again, standing there at an event, this other story just got downloaded to me about the black unicorn and what would that look like and really being because there's a lot of books right now i think i will say within black children's books the one thing i love there you know so many parents and authors are coming up with stories for our kids that we didn't that we did not have access to there's still ways to go but there were many it's on love your skin love your hair and I wanted something that really took it from a fantasy base, Yeah, you know, um, because that is the area. Like, I love, you know, what people may not know about Miss Sandra. I love paranormal. I love magical things. Yeah. I love, you know, unicorns and mermaids and dragons and griffins and, yeah. you know, fairies, all the things magical. But you usually don't see us represented in that space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where if we are, we are a subsidiary character. Yeah. You know, it's like we're the friend of the unicorn, (laughs) you know, we, there's tokenism. Token, Mm. maybe. Yeah. (laughs) So I wanted to do that. And so with Raina is a black unicorn. And it starts with a young girl who comes home to her parents crying because she's getting teased at school. And her parents tell her, and the child's name in the book is Raina. And the parents tell her, well, you were named after the Black Unicorn. Mm. And she shares with her the story of the Black Unicorn, that this little unicorn was born and she was special. And every single day, her parents said, you are loved you are beautiful. You are you. Yeah. And every single day. And that became the thing. And it, and it goes through with the story. It's, it's phenomenal because um, we even talked about this in terms of gender and, you know, not, not, this isn't an attempt to be insensitive in any way to, you know, gender specifics at all. Mm-hmm. But we talked about gender and the research that was there, that's there that talks about, you know, If there's only a male on the cover or a boy on the cover, then, you know, what it'll, you know, the gravitation, Mm -hmm. right? We know as children's authors that the cover is the thing. We only have so many seconds to gauge that interest with a child to begin with. So the illustrations and the illustrator, you know, perception is key. But for it to be a black unicorn in a world of white unicorns. Yes. You know, and what was really interesting, you asked me about um, Jasmine Mills, who's my illustrator. And when we were talking about it, and, and she's such an amazing partner to have. She like, is. That we will talk and I will come up with an idea and things. And when we were talking about it, originally my idea was that it was just going to be the black unicorn on the cover. And she rem- she reminded me that Sandra, you always talk about there aren't black and brown children on the cover. You better put a child, you need to put a child. Yeah, on like, what cover. are you doing? <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then she said, I think I'm going to give Raina's mane is going to have, is going to be a braided tail. And I'm like, really? 
And she's like, just let me. And I'm like, you know what? Do your thing. And she drew this beautiful black unicorn with this gorgeous mane with a beautiful braid that just was so representative of yeah. who we are. Yeah. It's, it's again, the perfect relationships, the imagination just works. You don't have to push and pry. She gets it. The, so the other reason why I just love Donovan is it's it, her Donovan just comes alive. Yeah, she does a fantastic job. She so, really does, and she was, it was so funny because Magical Day was the first book I worked with her on, and you know she's done such a she's amazingly talented, and I'm like, hey, we're growing together, you know. I'm go wherever I go, you go, and she's like wherever you go, I go, and we laugh about it. But it's such a it's it's very rare to have a partnership that works so well. Um, and that you can count on and count on each other. So I, 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 I agree. You know, I tell people all the time, and I, I and I'm just gonna shout this out to other children's authors out there. Please make sure and credit your illustrators. Yeah, totally. Because a lot of times, you know, the story is great. My stories are wonderful, but she helps them make them pop and yeah. bring them to life. You know, so yeah, I totally agree. Um, Thaddeus, my illustrator, he he did both of my the first two, and we were working on the sequel. It was it was the same way for us. And in fact, we did yeah. a project for um, Houston Swim Club together. So we've worked, he he just created Insight, the superhero character that I'm morphing into for Imaginating Adventures. It's really, really good to have that personal relationship with your illustrator and, you know, support them because I've seen Thad illustrate other works over the years and they've all been phenomenal, right? Yes. So, like we talk about Jasmine, it's like, oh my gosh, just being grateful for that. Irie, uh, one of my dear friends in uh, the UK, her illustrator who has since passed, but left her a lot of the PSD files and so forth. Mm. So she was able to manipulate some of those, but he was an architect by trade and just had an incredible imagination, you know, to design the flitlets, her, her world of diverse characters at all. Oh, this is multicultural theme, uh, reading scheme and theme. Um, it's important to have that relationship and you know, when you found the perfect, you do, you know, it, cause it is special. And I will say going back to the magical day, because that was my first children's book, I had no idea. And so I, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, I can draw for you and I can do this for you, but it's somebody who catches the vision that totally. you have totally. and, you're, and you're able to make magic together. That's what makes it wonderful. It is. Okay, so let's talk about the magic before the Black Unicorn because... The home Casa. Home Casa. That, this is the one that I don't have that I'm like, I got I to get it. <laughs> well, Home Casa, when people may not know, I used to sing pre-COVID, of course. I used to sing in the choir at church, um, mm -hmm. in the Catholic choir. And the my previous parish, the choir director owned an alpaca farm. And she had talked about that I, we were talking about one day what, what she was doing that day. And she said, oh, she was going to, she had to go pick up an alpaca. And she started telling me this story and that she had an alpaca and, you know, they're getting older and they're, they're selling off the farm and just keeping it, not the hundreds or so that they had, but keeping a few. And she sold her alpaca and the alpaca's name was Annie. And she had gotten a call that it was the, that Annie was misbehaving and, you know, and she said, and she was just telling me this story and she said, but Annie's the sweetest alpaca I have this, you know, and she kept telling me this and finally she said, we're going to just go and pick her up. And cause Annie just was like, you're not selling me. I want to come back home. Yeah. So again, I thought I was writing some other book. I was going to write them at the time I had planned on writing a sequel to the magical day. And I was sitting out there in the summer and I'm watching the hummingbirds and procrastinating in my mind. <laughs> and again, this new story came up about, huh, what if an alpaca decided to come back home? Yeah. And I started thinking about where we have a lot of um, grandparents who have moved back home and now they're living with their children and grandchildren yeah and i thought let me make this a multi-generational story yeah you know and then also make it fun with the alpaca coming back you know 
coming and you know running back to the house and they get sending it back and running back to the house and again it was so funny when my reader beta readers were reading it they would say well an alpaca can't fit in a car well fun fact um alpacas are small enough they can fit in a regular size car look it up on youtube you can find it it's funny so i love there's a new i can see that that they're actually uh and they're fairly uh they're fairly uh clever animals yes and then it was interesting because i learned a lot so i also learned that they're they're talk about um multicultural they come in i forgot oh my gosh i used to have the fact in my head of how many different shades mm -hmm. so from very Thank white you. to the darkest black so it's really cool Thank so you. again and that one um my mom was from panama my dad was from jamaica i tell everybody i speak spanglish i you know that no i no longer speak spanish fluently half some of my family do they do speak spanish fluently and i decided i wanted to make this a bilingual book yeah um and so that's where that came yeah i'm i'm so excited to read it i'm just just all of that because like you said look at what look at what you chose to put on the front yes cover right you know a grandmother so there was a grandmother, mm -hmm. there is the alpaca, and there's a little girl. And mm -hmm. it was by putting that little girl on the cover, which is how the black unicorn came to be, because somebody saw a young black girl on the cover, yeah. you know? And yeah. so it's like, ah. It's, it's, it's incredible. So now we have, so we have Donovan, right? Donovan starts mm -hmm. out, he's, you know, his adventure is on the magical day. Then we have the activity book that accompanies then um manana then we have well manana might have been first we talked manana, about that. manana was first it yes. was first then, well, really manana, the, the homage to mom and then the, manana the, yeah. manana and then um color me sane i did that was just that was just a fun journal i wanted a little journal and activity book for adults that kind of went on with manana starts today yeah and it was when adult coloring books had come out and were all the rage yeah and I, one of the um, frustrations I heard, my sister, she's also an artist, and they were saying, and I would hear that those adult coloring books are stressful. They're supposed to de-stress you, but they're so small, the, you know, they're like really tiny. Yeah. So I asked Jasmine to actually create some illustrations that were big enough, like in a children's book size, that you could still color and journal. So that you can journal if you feel like, you can color if you want, and you can do some free art if you want. So that was Color Me Sane, an adult coloring book to keep calm in a chaotic world. <laughs> it's just a whole beautiful library, and it really does exemplify who she is. I can't, I, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make this up. So then, <laughs> so then similarly, you yeah. did the the black unicorn and then you did the affirmations for... that's the newest one this yeah. is the one that has just come out come out yeah so that um yes and that was really i gotta tell you can we talk that was yes, fun we can. <laughs> let me just <laughs> here's what i will tell you about that i decided i wanted to do you know people have been pushing me for years you should do an affirmation book for kids you should do an affirmation book and it just did not feel right. Mm -hmm. But, and again, um, the Black Unicorn came out in 2020, right after George Floyd, the murder of George Floyd and the pain and hurt that we as Black people were feeling in the community. Yeah, And that did, you know, people really, that was, we, there was a pandemic going on. There was all of that going on. And then I thought, if I was going to do a book of affirmations, now would be the time, 2020, yeah. 21. Yeah. And I started thinking about if I did it for alphabet and affirmations. So I thought, huh, let's look at the alphabet. So again, like, A, you're amazing. B, you're brave. C, you're confident. So then I get to X. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say X was extraordinarily crazy to do. I'm sure. So I don't know if you remember, but I remember when I was a child that all the alphabet books, 
X was for either X-ray or xylophone. Absolutely. That's all it was. Right. I mean, you know, but, it's not yeah. all there is, but. Yeah. But I knew it because it was really for more for caretakers and parents and kids to learn it. That I, I wanted it so that a, you could tell, say to a child, you are, and they could repeat back, I am. Totally. So you can't say you are xylophone, I am yeah, x -ray. No, that doesn't work. What found this word? It's xenial, X E N I A L. Yeah. <laughs> So I called my editor right in time. I'm calling my editor saying, hey, do you have some X words? She put it out on LinkedIn, you know? So it was a whole big thing, thing, thing to come up with that, but yeah. But, but think about that. Okay, so again, this is yet again, what exemplifies that we never stop learning. We are always improving. And in writing for children, we ourselves as authors, educators, we're stretching ourselves to be able to engage in this way with children. I love that. Now you yeah. got to want to look up <laughs> what that means. ex -zenial. Oh, Oh, I got to tell you, my sister made me laugh and because she was one of, you know, having your family as early readers can be fun and it oh, sometimes can be challenging. Or a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and so she said to me, so who's going to teach the word to the parents? <laughs> Because she's like, I don't know what that is. It's true. So in the back, at the back of the book, don't have no fear for adults and for kids. There is, a, in other words, a, a, you know, the synonyms, you know, the, the little thesaurus. So xenial means welcoming. So it's like, you are welcoming. I am welcoming. So that we can all learn. Because, and, and every time I tell somebody, people go, oh my goodness. And so I said to Going back to Jasmine, we were joking about it because I said, so I have this idea that, you know, pineapple is a sign of welcoming. And, you know, my sister is going, who is going to get that? Well, Jasmine did a nod to that. So the T-shirt on the of the young woman on the on that affirmation has a little pineapple on it. Yeah. You know, it's just a simple nod. So, well, here again, it's literacy. It's literacy. It's literacy. It's literacy. It's so it's when you just said that, you know, in the back, there's a, a feature called in other words, we did a little of that um, in other words, Wednesday. So we would present a word and we would ask little ones because we had given away a bunch of dictionaries at the little free library. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and we said, Hey, over spring break, I mean, over Christmas break in that year, I was like, you know, every day, you know, pick a word, we're going to pick a word, and then you are going to have to go find a similar word. So a word that is in other words, which is vocabulary building and the like. Uh, very important. If you're, if you're affirming something, you, you want to identify with the meaning, right? Yes. What yes. does it mean to be welcoming, right? And pineapple, so both figurative and, and literal. I love it. Yeah, love yeah. It. So it was, it was that was so fun, you know. And it was, it was interesting. To, you know, different challenges when I wanted the book to come out, and I learned a lot about myself. On, you know, what things happen when they happen, and books come when they're supposed to. They really and, do. And, and it's like, okay, you know. And so one of the things that I ended up doing. Because the magical day, it does appear, uh, not the magical day. You got me to see, you got me on Donovan now. The black, you, Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> the black unicorn, the tale of the black unicorn. So this is just like an offshoot of that. So it's alphabet and affirmations with the black unicorn. Because mm -hmm. in the black unicorn, it was all about her parents affirming her of who she was and her self-worth every single day. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are you. So that's the one um affirmation in the why that we just left as you at yeah. why for you yeah. and tied it back to you are loved you are you beautiful you are you and but what that also does is that it opened up and i i said you know what from that i'm making this a series so it's the magical confidence series and so it will di feature different mythical creatures and, the, and have a different story and different themes, but now they'll have um, different magical creatures. So wait, has this been announced anywhere else? You're the first. Shh. I, I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, like why can't these broadcasts have the mind blowing emoji? 
I need a mind blowing emoji right now. That yeah. is oh, that is incredible. That yeah. is wonderful. I cannot wait. Literally, See, I cannot oh, wait. I, you know what though? That helps push me because I'll tell you my secret is that I can be a big procrastinator. The of course, ideas, you got all the books to read. I, right? I, the ideas are in my head and you know I'm writing a little here and a little there. So the two stories that are looking to come out next or it's either, whichever gets done, whoever, who, whichever um, creature decides their story is coming, I think it's the dragon is next, so. They see the dragon story. That is, it's going to be absolutely amazing as all of them are. I, oh, I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> um, when I, when we, so when I decided to move things, not so much as in a different direction, but to align with everything that we had done in the classroom, one of the things that I noticed, like, you know, in implementing stories like the magical day and a, a lot of other beautiful stories that I've gotten over the years from incredible authors like yourself, self-published, mainstream published and the like, all multicultural. I don't do anything else. It's got to be multicultural. Sorry, not me. So, um, and then there's reasons for that, of course, beyond representation, you know, this is, this is how we expand on our imagination, right? Mm -hmm. So in thinking about this, I said, you know, I would love because I realized that this can't just be me. It can't just be me that loves children's books like this. And as an independent author, um, sometimes in terms of the visibility for your work, you know, back in the day, like when we were talking about we're, we're old school, if you will, mm -hmm. Um there weren't as many books as are out today. Like now it's a thing. It's a big thing. Right. And, and I'm glad, I mean, we've even talked about some of the reoccurring themes. Yeah. So to have some of the books that really, really touch on and teach and encourage and inspire is really important for children, especially in the, especially in the independent world. So I said, you know what, I would love to build a little free library, but I, again, one of my one of my values is not exploiting community. And so I said, well, let me ask the community if they even want a little free library, if they feel that that's valuable. So I did. And they were like, yeah. And I I had put the information out saying that I was looking to buy books because at the time we were going to go ahead and just buy everything for the little free library from to support independent mm -hmm. authors. Well, then COVID happened. And it was just what have you. I mean, we were just getting the library like painted and situated. We had gotten some of the books, but then COVID. And so it, nice. and it hasn't been reopened since, but something special was coming. And I reached out to you then and we were just talking about it. And the I, this idea of having these books readily available to children everywhere. And one of the things that I've seen you do repeatedly, even through the pandemic, when you're talking about procrastination, it's being busy and, you know, being president, like you're still very invested in literacy and the power of literacy um, is still engaged with kids through like classroom visits, like you're still doing this. And I got to tell you, it was it, it for just like everybody else. It was really difficult during the, the, the height of the pandemic, you know, when everything got shut down. And when you're used to engaging in person with kids and, you know, and having that as a platform to go in and do school visits and now you can't. So I, you know, we talked about learning. I had to learn how to do a virtual school visit and how to take the book and, you know, and it's like, how do you take a book and, and read it virtually? Because nobody, you can't read the book like this, you know? And so it's like creating it on the screen and creating a virtual visit so that you're still out there and saying it's okay, you know? And, and having that available and learning about that. Because the one thing that I loved was that during the pandemic and everything else, people still wanted to figure out how to be connected. So yeah. whether it was, you know, learning how to use Zoom, you know, it used to be old days, it was Skype, and now it became Zoom and, you know, and Google Me and, you know, all of that. But we learned how to continue to connect. And I think that's what was most important. 
No, seriously, because as you know, I mean, you know, a lot of this is flexibility and adaptability, yes. you know, um, not just for us, for our children, for our yeah. elders, yes. right? Um, and so we were all tasked and all challenged, but we made it, we did it and still learning. You know, I talked to you a little bit about the event we did yesterday, how it was difficult to, cause I don't, I didn't have another me to kind of man the ship. So, you know, the, the, the girls who were on the showcase, they were like, girl, you flying this plane. And I'm like, well, it's feeling shaky you up here in the cockpit. <laughs> like, I hope we don't crash. I'm, I feel like I'm losing altitude, but it was good because, you know, I'm one who loves to learn. Um, mm -hmm. It's even in my strengths finder a test that I, an assessment I just took. I love to learn. So for me to learn something, um, not just for me, but to be able to share it. Right. Yeah. That it means the world. So yes, we have what's coming up next. Um, we think, we hope. It yes. was something, something's coming, you know, something, something amazing is coming. Um, and yeah, it's going to be fun. So I gotta, I gotta get this in before we leave. Okay. Um, <laughs> we were talking, this is a couple weeks ago. We were talking, it was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And we were talking about, well, there was another conversation. Let me go back. There was another conversation. We talked about uh, like one of your big, big dreams. And I won't, I won't talk about that one, but you envision what you're wearing. Right. And <laughs> then, then we talked again and you were like, I love dresses today. Ladies and gentlemen, is the very first day of spring. And I just like to say that Mrs. Sandra Elaine Scott is looking lovely in her spring attire. I'm sure that's a dress. Tell Thank us you. about the dress, uh, fest. The, the dress. <laughs> I, you know what? We all create our own styles and things. And I just decided at one point, I love a dress and I wanted this. This actually, believe it or not, this one is a blouse. And beautiful. My, thank you. My uh, One of my sisters sent this to me and I have to take a picture of it and let her know because she always wants to, when she finds something, she's, she'll send it. And I thought when you said that this was going to be your spring, you know, this was going to be a spring broadcast. I'm like, oh, today, tomorrow, first day of spring. I want to wear something cheerful. Totally. Um, and yeah. So, and the, you know, what Miss Tiff is saying is that my big bodacious dreams is one day that my books will make it to the big screen. And that I will be able to walk a red carpet. And, you know, I tell everybody about that. And the reason I share it and, and is that tell people your dreams. Totally. Always tell people your dreams. Don't be scared to. So I like, I dream big, bodacious dreams all the time. Yeah. And you know what? If it doesn't come true, oh, well, something so, else will come up. Yeah, dream something dream, else. Dream something else. A dream, you know. And it's okay because totally. it's a dream because you make it up. Totally. And it's As you okay. go. I mean, all of these books, they came out of my crazy imagination. So it's like, yeah. So that's one of my, you know, and so, yeah, I want to walk the red carpet in a pretty dress. And yeah. I cannot, like, again, I'm like, I'm now I'm sitting in the front row. Like, I know her. <laughs> Yes, honey, I know her. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, it's like okay. I love things that sparkle. I love, you know, I. That's just me. You know, I just enjoy that. Um, and it's so funny. My niece, we were. She was trying to teach me how to do a TikTok dance because I said I want to do one, <laughs> and it did not go well. And it was funny because she's like, "You are so prissy, Aunt Sandra," and I'm like, "Uh huh." <laughs> And I was having a blast. And she was just like, no. Like, that's not how it goes. Let's go, Tia. That's not, that's not like, what we're doing. <laughs> I'm laughing with you, by the way. Here's the thing. Yeah. This is how we keep it fun. This is seriously with all that this comes with life and life more abundantly. This is what it is to have fun. Yes. Have yes. fun, you know, dream have big. As much, have as much fun as you can. Absolutely. I mean, this is, and this is why I'm just so excited. Whenever we talk, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, to know that 
out there is Sandra Elaine Scott. And yeah, well, I might not talk to her all the time, but we see each other on social media. It's one of those things like I've just always loved, loved, loved your work. Always loved who you are and what you stand Thank for. You. And when Thank we talked you. about the dresses, I was just like, that makes sense. It's it's you. I mean, I can picture this. Well, you know, even it's on the funny. photo. Even yeah. on the, you know, and it's funny because um, that when I would do a book um, events and author in person, it would be really cool because kids would see me and they go, you, you look like your picture. Yeah. For I'm me. like, I do. I <laughs> Yes. You know, it's like, yeah, yes. yeah, that's me. I kind of do. And, and you're just like, yeah. And, you know, it's just to have fun. I, I can't be anybody else but me. And, you know, if I was to share it with children, adults, anyone is, you know, when they say be yourself, when you are truly who you are, it doesn't take work. It doesn't right? You just, you just be when you're trying to be like somebody else, that's when you have to put a whole lot of effort into it, but there's no effort when you're just yourself. And truthfully, you know, that effort to me has always been a waste when we're talking about spiritually, yeah. right? It's wasteful. And that's one thing that God, if we are, if we're calling by name, you know, is vehement about waste, yeah. right? Yeah. Don't waste because nah. you don't know the measure. You don't know how much you'll have in terms of time and energy. So just be you and, you know, improve upon yourself, right? Be that black unicorn, you know, yeah. start today. Manana starts today. All of those themes just, again, they interweave and they just make up Sandra in a beautiful dress. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. So, <laughs> Next up, we have the series. Um, any any adult books in the works? You know, I've been toying with one, uh, and I've been toying with maybe an af another affirmation book. We'll see, or okay. something. We'll see. Because my um, honest, well, it starts today is beautiful. It really is. Thank you. And it, you know what? I love it. It's truly evergreen. It, it really it lives in evergreen meaning that. Every uh, the beginning of every year, people call me to talk about affirmations because at the beginning of the year, people are starting renew year's resolutions and they want something to carry them forward. And it happens that time of year, you yeah. know? And so then it tends to do that. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm playing with it and just deciding, you know, I tell everybody my inner child grew up with my outer child. Yeah, for so real. We're, me too. We are, we're all playing. <laughs> Me too. Like, girls, girls, come back over here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, you know, I'm always playful. So who and knows that's what it should be? Going. That's what who it should be. Going. Yeah. Well, I am so gracious that you have taken an hour out of your Sunday looking beautiful to talk with us here. You know, we haven't really talked about where the, the, the Meet the Author series is going, but in our navigation towards Imagine Reading Adventures, we we have something extra special. So I'm so gracious that you've been a, a part of that. I really, really am. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you for inviting me to your amazing audience and also for just being a cheerleader um, for my work, especially for Donovan and the magical day and just being the amazing, wonderful creature that you are. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm learning more and more to just say thank you because I'm like me. And then, you know, you know how it goes. It's that. Yeah. yeah, no, just say thank you. Because really, people love me and I, I'm i grateful. Like, yeah, I'm grateful. So thank you. So, all right. Um, I put on a dress too today because I yesterday I, I wore my imaginary shirt and <laughs> I don't realize I didn't do laundry this morning or last night. <laughs> So I was like, well, I guess I'm a follow Sandra suit. I guess it's going to be a dress too. And I just put on my little blue jean over it. Um, but um, you get I'm to gonna, be you. Totally. And I'm so comfortable, you know, just yeah. sitting at my desk, you know, just talking to you. So thank you for this hour. Um, typically what we do, ladies and gentlemen, if you're tuning in right now, you tune in later is uh, this video will be available for replay on Facebook, but we move it over to YouTube. And next month we will have the, the privilege of it's, um, 
we're going to celebrate Black librarians next month and we're going to meet a librarian. This will be the first time we dip off and it's not really meet the author, it's meet the librarian because mm -hmm. librarians are also very important to this conversation, you know, um, especially Black librarians. So yeah, we're going ma Black male librarians. Let me just, let me mm -hmm. just put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this guy is high energy. He does some wonderful things with children. I mean, just excited about it. So Thank you for tuning in. Thank you again, Sandra, for being a part. And I think we're going to probably uh, follow up with each other here soon. Absolutely. Know, via telephone. So we can just, you know, I can I can get the lowdown on the, on the series. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like, I can't tell you nothing. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Thank you. All righty. Talk soon. Okay, bye-bye.